श्रेयोन्यदुते वेयस्ते उभे नाथे पुषं से नीता तय्रेय आदान से साधु भवतीयतेर्थ्यौप्रेय वृणीते श्रेयश्च प्रेयश्च मनुष्य मेतस्तौ संपरीत्य विनक्तिर श्रेयो हि धीरो प्रेयसो वृणीते प्रेय मंदो योग क्षेमृणीते सत्व प्रिया प्रिय काध्यान्न चिकेतोक्षी नैता शृंकान्तमयीम्त यज्जी बहवो मनुष्या दूरमेते विपरीते विशूची अविद्या विद्येति ज्ञाता विद्यासीनम नचिकेत सन्े न्वा काम बहवो लोलुपंत अविद्यामे वर्तम स्वयं धीरा पंडित मनम दंद्रभ्यम पर्यति मूढ़ा अंधे नीयमाधा न सांपराय प्रतिभाति प्रमाद्यमोहे न मूढ़ अयम लोको नास्ति पर मानी पुनः पुनर्वशमापद्यते मे श्रवणाया बहुभिरियो न लभ्य शुण्वी बहवो यम न विद्यु आश्चर्य वक्ता कुशलोस्य लब्धा आश्चर्यो ज्ञाता कुशलाशिष्ट न नरेणावरेण प्रोक्त सुविज्ञेय बहुधा चिंतम अन्य प्रोक्ते गतिरत्र अणीयान्ह्यतर्क्यमणु प्रमाण last week we started the second section the first mantra where we spoke of the two paths one is the path of the pleasant another is the path of good shreya and preya mantra says these two having different objectives both find a man blessed is one who chooses the good between the two but he who chooses the pleasant loses the true end in the process of explaining this mantra i think we left ourselves a question didn't we what is the question gajima how this uh, karma can uh, be from the ignorant Sorry. 
We set the path of the good. No, we asked, how do we say action arises out of avidya, ignorance? How do we say any action arises out of avidya? The path of the pleasant is said to be the path of avidya. The path of the good is the path of vidya. In fact, in the fourth mantra, he spells it out exactly. He uses the same words. He says one is the path of knowledge, other is the path of ignorance. So the question is, the karma marga, the path of action, why do we say arises out of ignorance? Any thoughts? I am quite audible, right? But this light echo. Is everybody feeling the same? Okay. I think we will go on. If required, we can. So the doctor has come and checked the patient and the patient is behaving. That's the result. The patient is the computer, the doctor is Dr. Vijay. So Dr. Vijay came and to look at the patient and the patient is behaving. That's the reason I don't have to use the ear pods. Otherwise it used to be a pain in the neck or pain in the ears rather. But to put them on. How do we say that all actions arise out of avidya? Vidya is ignorance. If, if, if most of you have remembered the question in the classroom, forget it. If any one of you have thought of it before, then only you are qualified to answer. Your conscience is the witness to it. Ah, I forgot, sir. Then forget it. What is the cause of, how do we say avidya is the cause of karma? Yes, Hiduji. <clears throat> uh, action uh, arises out of uh, desire. And uh, desire, uh, we get in, uh, get into action thinking that uh, it will give us uh, happiness and uh, but we ultimately end up in sorrow and suffering so no one desires sorrow and suffering but we we uh, think it, it gives happiness but uh, since it is giving sorrow and suffering it is we we, we are in avidya or ignorance But how, why do you call desire as avidya? Hmm? How can you call desire as avidya? Not desire. It's uh, the chronology of uh, uh, this thing from vasana, uh, desire ultimately that gets into action, karma. Uh, so, karma we do, we always, uh, uh, we are in action and uh, we do with a purpose. And the purpose is to that it will give us uh, fulfillment or happiness, joy. That is what uh, we chase. But uh, we, when it is only, when it is not karma yoga, when it is only karma, it is uh, it leads us to sorrow and suffering. Then later we realize, at least when we are in 
thanks to guru and knowledge, we realize it is avidya, it is ignorance. Hmm. No, you're absolutely right. If we go by the chronology of action, what is the chronology of action? The chronology of action is vasana. From the vasana comes the thought. From the thought comes desires. From the desires emanate actions. Now the question is, how do we say <clears throat> that avidya is the root cause of any karma? From desire or vasana arises action. And vasana, the synonym of vasana is known as avidya. Therefore, we can say from avidya comes karma. As simple as that. Synonymous. How do we say that vasana is synonymously known as avidya? Hmm. What is Vidya? Vidya is knowledge. When you have knowledge of the self, there is no Vasanas. So the world is born out of a Vidya. Actions are born out of a Vidya. Means act, the root cause of a Vidya is Vasana. When you go to sleep, your Vasanas are not active. So the world that you are experiencing as a Veka, temporarily they are not available. The world disappears into nothingness as far as the, the dreamer or the deep sleeper. The waking world doesn't exist. But the moment you wake up, what wakes up? The vasanas wake up. When the vasanas wake up, automatically the world that you are experiencing also arises. So therefore it is the vasanas that project the world. So when there are no vasanas, there is no world, temporarily in deep sleep. So the vasanas is the cause of the world and vasanas arise when there is ignorance. Because the moment you have cognition of the self, there is no avidya. Like when there is enough light, there is no darkness. Where there is knowledge, there is no ignorance. So when knowledge or the wisdom is dawned, the avidya in the form of vasanas and desires and attachments starts fading away, start disappearing, start. They don't start the end. So therefore, you can very safely say avidya is the cause of karma. Avidya is the cause of action, frenzied action. You get into an action which is binding. You get into an action which makes you extroverted. You get into an action of delusion. And when you are deluded, you can't listen to a man of knowledge. You argue You argue in, in circles. The fifth mantra is going to say, these people are going in circles. I can't help you. You can't see my point. So I just give up. That kind of an attitude a guru has. You are caught up in a vicious cycle. A true guru will not bother. A guru will wait for a student who is not caught up in a vidya, who seeks vidya. That's what he is going to say in the fourth mantra. You are a student of vidya. You are a wise man. You have made the right choice. You didn't choose the path of pleasant. You have chosen the path of the shreha, the path of good, he says. <coughs> So to the extent you become introverted, to that extent you can take the path of jnanam. An extroverted person takes the path of karma, action. So the before you start your spiritual journey, you are a man of action. Before man of action you are, what are you? I'm just trying to give you the an order as it were. <clears throat> uh, 
if the the top Correct spelling, ah. Huh? Ah? Why are all these lines coming? Ah, okay. Enlightenment. How do you reach enlightenment to the path of knowledge? What comes before path of knowledge is path of action. Before path of action comes path of inaction. This is the journey from this way right to the top. I'm saying what the, the mantra is saying, okay? You don't quote this out of context. I mean, out of context may have a different suggestion. Now, the path of inaction is tamas. Such people are given hatha yoga. Hatha yoga means the path of compulsion. The path of action here refers to the rajas. Rajasic people are those who are, are materialistic and sensual. We can also call them as the extroverted. The path of knowledge is the sattva which leads to enlightenment. <clears throat> So path of action is also known as the path of ignorance. So the more ignorant you are, the more you are performing actions, the more you are performing actions out of avidya, there is greater bondage to samsara, there is a greater bondage to the world. You are running behind your desires and you are in a you're caught up in a trap, you're in a vicious cycle. The moment there is vidya, the moment there is knowledge, instantly there is a higher purpose, a higher goal. Thereafter, what you seek is moksha, what you seek is enlightenment. So if you are not seeking moksha, if you're not seeking enlightenment and you're seeking something else in the world, it is the reason is because of avidya. You are running behind your desires which binds you to the world. So this is what is the answer to the question and implication in the next few mantras. So it will help us prepare understand what the text in the context is saying. Right. Yes, Inaji. I'll continue to keep the board so in case I need to explain something. Please try now. Right. Um, Hari Om Guruji. Uh, like how you have, can you, the first question is, path of inaction has got path of compulsion. What is the relationship between the two? The second question is, for Tamas, the, the, the onward action is Hatha Yoga. What is the onward action for uh, Rajas and Sattva? Two questions. Thank you. Now, firstly, the first question, the path of inaction is tamas, where you are introduced to the path of compulsion with Hatha Yoga. Hatha is compulsion, means somebody forces you to act. There is no action on your own. Since you are in indolence, you are in tamas, somebody has to push you into action. 
So obviously, you, there has to be an external force that has to get you to action. It's like your parents shouting at you when you're a kid, get up and clean your room. Get up and study. Do this, do that. Why don't you exercise? Why don't you do this? By inaction. So somebody has to compel you, push you to action. That is tamas. You can take it physically, literally inactive. Mentally also, you can't conceive any anything to pursue. There's, there's total, no drive from within you. Why don't you get to work? Why don't you go and look for a job? Why don't you just go and meet with your friends all the time? Lazy, you know, dull, morose life. You know, the kind of uh, an attitude. There's nothing, there's no drive from within. That is Rajas. Uh, Thomas, sorry. Now, Rajasic people, what is the uh, remedy? Is it what you're asking to the Rajasic people? Wherever there is Rajas, you have to inject some knowledge because Rajas is avidya, is ignorance. To an ignorant person who's running behind his desires, who's caught up in the world, who has no higher purpose, a greater vision, to him you introduce knowledge and say, man, do you realize the futility of your action? As Siddhuji said, you're running behind materialistic ends, running behind sensual pleasures, you're running like a chicken without a head, one thing after another, acquiring one, want to enjoy it, acquire another. So this kind of uh, insatiable urge, there is a, an urge where you can't. Somebody else is writing. So please don't use the keyboard. Looks like everybody can uh, write on the board. So please be mindful. Unless it is taking my gestures, I don't know. Is it taking my gestures? No. Why is all coming up like this? Never mind. So, the path of action, Rajas, you need to give a direction to the higher. How do you give direction? What gives direction is the knowledge. When you have knowledge, it sets a goal. All right. Now, what is redemption to a man of knowledge? Okay. Yes, and you. Something to clarify here. No, the, the, the lines are coming because you have enabled everybody to, whenever somebody touches their, their trackpad like this, you see, I'm going to draw a line now. So you have to let, you have to stop all the, only you can control it. Now that is the part of Avidya work. Then how to do it? Huh? Huh? I didn't want to close it. Somebody closed it. What is happening? No, Guruji. I tried to stop participating. Uh, you know, like wanted to tell Sinaji try now, but it's gone. Whatever Vidya I gave is become Avidya now. Huh? What is going on? There, there is a setting where all can participate or only teacher can participate on that whiteboard. We have to find it and click it. Only teacher can participate. Everybody thinks they are teachers in the classroom. Pardon? Everybody thinks they are gurus in the classroom. They think, they, I know everything. Who are you telling me? Uh, that kind of a setting. That is the mode you are operating. Okay, tell me. So, yeah. are you... You are writing knowledge. We are only drawing lines. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you follow so far so good? The path to, to, a, to a man who is Rajasic, you have to give knowledge so that he gets direction to a higher purpose. So, is this the knowledge that leads you to path of knowledge and sattva on the next stage? So, from sir, the purpose of our spiritual journey is to move from tamas to rajas, from rajas to sattva. And then some point you must transcend sattva and reach trans sattva. This is the goal and purpose of life. So we all need to evolve. As a human, we need to grow. You cannot afford to stagnate. Nature Providence will not allow you to stagnate. If you stagnate, if you cease to act, if you cease to grow, you die. You cease to exist. 
that is the law of nature. Everything has to grow. <clears throat> Whether in this jinma or jinma to jinma, you have to evolve. So, how do you evolve within this jinma? Is to move from tamas to rajas. So, identify all of us have got the three gunas. Ashwati, you know that, isn't it? Each of us have got the three gunas. A proportion. What differentiates you and me is that there is a certain percentage. So, even the most sattvic person in this classroom has tamasic tendencies. So, what is the first step you got to do? Introspection, Guruji. So, with the knowledge you gain through classes like this, you have to introspect on your own time, which is, you know, waking up early and, you know, going through the knowledge and then introspecting and kind of gauging where you are in terms of uh, the three the three gunas. Right. So the first step is you must identify areas of tamas. So your, your, your answer that you need to introspect, you need to examine, scan your actions and see where have I been tamasic? Tamasic is not only inaction. Tamas is indifferent to your action. Tamas is imperfect actions. Tamas is a heedless attitude towards your own personality. Heedlessness towards the consequences of your actions also is tamas. When you give a word to somebody, it becomes your duty to acknowledge. To To say, I will do something and not act on its tamas. But I am very running, very much active with everything else. But what happened to this particular action? This is your area of tamas. So identify areas where you are tamasic. Then wherever you are tamasic, inject action. You know, when I talk to people, And I connect with students like you all who are in the journey with, with me. We are on this journey to advance this wisdom. I can clearly see in your dialogue, I know that you are caught up with something. Something has distracted you. Something has occupied you. So what happens? Wisdom takes a back seat. I didn't ask you to do wisdom. I have not sought you to serve this wisdom. You want to serve this wisdom, and in the process, what happens? Priorities change. So, wisdom takes a backseat. Tamas towards this path. Don't tell me of responsibilities. Don't tell me of work. I am also a man of, I am also a grihastha like you. I also go through the same demands and challenges of any householder. It's a shastra say you must, his knowledge is designed for a householder. So, if you tell me reasons you can't do, I will tell you enough reasons why you can conquer them and continue to serve the higher. Don't give me reasons. So, tamas is where you are, you blindfold yourself, you are inactive towards the higher purpose. That also is tamas. Why? Because you are feeding, fanning your rajas. What is rajas? Running behind the worldly pursuit is rajas. Not seeking the higher pursuit is tamas. You are very cold towards the higher goals. Why? Because you are hot behind worldly attachments, worldly pursuits. I want this. I want that. I have to achieve this. I need to get that. So the worldly pursuits takes a precedence of priority over the pursuit of the higher. I can't help. I can't do much. Yesterday I was talking to somebody. Not to be pinpointing fingers. So that person says, Guruji, I'm not available. I'm very busy. What do you mean very busy? Huh? But I will do whatever I can. <laughs> You're doing me a favor or what? Don't do me a favor, please. Don't try to be kind and courteous to me. Be kind and courteous to yourself. Serving, if I am an instrument of this wisdom, serving this wisdom is serving yourself. Not serving this wisdom is being unkind to yourself. 
don't i don't need any favor not this organization needs a favor or an act of favor or a smile from you don't have the arrogance or the kartrutva bhavana in you to say yo i am doing something to this organization or to him or to that cause the organization doesn't need you and when i say that i know we need because providence will find its way to make take this fall and i am not talking from the point of arrogance please forgive me the choice of words but you should not think you are doing a favor to some that is rajas and the more there is rajas and when you inject knowledge as sattva starts taking over you will start realizing a greater purpose there is a greater drive to 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 ignite that goal of wisdom in you and if you truly embark on the sattva the path of gyanam you will reach moksha so to a tamasic man you need to tell him what to do to a rajasic person you need to redirect his actions to something higher to a sattvic man you need to be assiduous you need to be consistent you need to have the shraddha and the shraddha will take you to the goal of moksha and all these three are there in degree to all of us all of us have this phase of a shade of tamas a shade of rajas a shade of sattva identify it so since we mentioned on the gunas you must how what should you do with these three gunas what you should do is you must title tamas sinha ji are i thought you are with me in the classroom are you with me in the classroom i am answering you are you with me in the classroom i am with you why am i getting a whatsapp message from sinha i only know one sinha something because i i mean rajas i in multitasking in rajas you are rakshas are you are distracting me from my journey i have nothing to do with you are i am talking giving gyanam to you suddenly is messaging me in my phone sinha appeared suddenly huh why are you looking at your phone <laughs> something cropped up nothing should crop up nobody no no satvik man will contact me all rajesh burst is you anybody is saying message i will not heed i am talking to you in the class and somebody is messaging me same person is messaging me i am what else i am little lost please help me rationalize is it wrong not to respond to that no chalo no, no i i don't need any response no no i am not going to respond to your message don't worry i'm asking in the classroom here have you got my message have you got the answer what have you got to do with the gunas you got to stifle your tamas you got to promote action enhance sattva okay rather uh one minute let me re clarify that you got to distract me sinha uh you got to stifle tamas you got to sustain ta- rajas you got to enhance sattva these are the three means of effort to each guna stifle tamas sustain rajas let me capture them put it in the chat box stifle tamas sustain rajas enhance or promote sattva this is your spiritual sadhana with reference to these gunas stifle wherever there is tamas just stifle it no way i will follow prey to ignorance or acts of avidya stifle it wherever there is rajas i, I sustain action and then i promote sattva enhance sattva amitama the the reason we say sustain rajas is to conquer tamas i need to be in action if i don't ensure i am active i will slip into tamas so to that extent i keep my action going 
but since i'm injecting sattva i mean enhancing sattva the action is not in the rajasic sphere but the action will take a direction towards a higher goal Okay. You get that? Perfect. But is but if you just feed rajas, if you sus feed or sustain rajas without sattva, you end up becoming a rajasic person. But since you are enhancing your sattvic portion, the sattva influences your action. And how does sattva influence your action? Sattva influences action. How does sattva influence action? Just ponder on this question. I'll come back after I address Vijayji. How the question is: How does sattva enhance your action or influence your action? Which is action here is rajas. So the question is: How does sattva influence your action? Yeah, Vijayji. Um. Hi Krishna, uh, the the part that you had mentioned, part of knowledge is part of sattva. Uh, does bhakti fall under the same category? That's what I said. Don't quote this out of context. I knew this will crop up. When I say part of jnana, here means the spiritual path. Sattva includes all the three parts: karma, bhakti, jnana. So. Okay. So words only to imply a collective usage. So part of knowledge includes the spiritual journey, where everything enhances your sattvic portion. Karma yoga also enhances sattvic portion. Bhakti yoga also enhances. Jnana yoga also enhances. So they all three are implied here. Okay, sir. And um, the other question I had was, it may be in a different context. Uh, but how does uh, action and inaction and inaction and action ap uh, apply here? Can you take it up after we finish the line of thought here? Can you come back again with the question, please? Because it takes us out of context here. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, Harish. Guruji, uh, can you hear me? Uh, Harish, uh, uh, I was just talking to Vijayji the other day. By the way, Vijayji is uh, Harish's brother-in-law. They are in Ashram, they are in Hattabad. And I was telling them that we are titling you as Mini Vyasa. <laughs> so, <laughs> good work you are doing. <laughs> don't you? Others don't get it, never mind, leave it. We both understand that's, that's all I want. Yes, please. Guruji, in uh, one of the classes a few weeks ago, uh, in one of the discussions, you mentioned that the higher we grow spiritually, the more challenges we are likely to face. To some Something to that effect. I don't know if you recall that statement, Guruji. Um, why is that the case, Guruji? Uh, why do we face more challenges the more spiritual we become or more sattvic we become? Is it because we are, I mean, not we, but is it because sattvic people are going against the grain? Therefore, their numbers are getting fewer and fewer, so they are not identifying with the with the, with the general world uh, no. things? Or is, it, is there, a, I, I, need, I just wish you understand a bit more on this statement, Guruji. There's also an independent question, but I'll take it since uh, it's not, it's still independent. You know? um, in future, I would want you all to refrain from asking questions out of context because it takes the whole flow of thought from the class or the subject matter. So gather your questions and you can, you're free to ask any number of questions before the satsang begins, means at the very first, at the beginning, you can ask, then there is no thought flow that I have generated. Okay. Now, but still I'll ask the question. The question is yes, all, why is it that the challenges keep increasing? It is not only in the spiritual field, in every field of activity. If you are doing, if a if a, uh, if a student is playing and if he's playing sport at the school level, 
or in their own campus, they're having competition, inter-school or inter-competition within the campus. There's a certain amount of competition. Imagine the competition shifts to inter-school in the city, many schools, inter-school competition. Will the competition, level of competition increases? The same game the student is playing, the sportsman is playing, he plays at the interstate or national level. The competition increases, he reaches an international level, the totally different ball game altogether. So the higher you grow, the greater are the challenges because the greater will be the temptations. So if you, if I have if somebody has to be bribed, you get a job done, you give him uh, five dollars. I'm talking dollars because you understand. You give him five dollars, you say, oh, you think I'm a I'm a beggar or what? get lost, please. Okay, you make it hundred dollars. He will start staring at you. Say, what are you trying to do? Trying to play funny games with me? Get out! Nothing. You start. You increase it thousand percent. You give him thousand dollars or whatever the person is thousand dollars. Give him. He starts slowly shifting his stance, but he's not yet sold himself to you. You make it five thousand dollars. He falls flat at your feet. He is doing shastra and start to you. A fellow who said, get out from your room at $5, he'll fall at your feet for $5,000. He, It is too powerful a temptation. He can't stand because he is weak. So as you evolve, the challenges keep increasing. So you need to be far more alert. You need to be far more assiduous. You need to be far more careful as you keep going higher. It applies in every field, any field of activity. So greater, higher you go, greater is the challenge. So therefore you need to be far more mindful, far more careful, you have to put in far greater effort to ensure that you don't get distracted, you don't fall a prey. It is a universal rule in any field of activity. It applies to spiritual field as well. Does it answer the <clears throat> so, coming to the question I asked, what's the question I asked, Diagrima? Uh, how does sattva influence action? Yes, Amitam has written here. How does sattva, when you inject sattva into action, how does sattva influence your rajasic action? Sattva is higher knowledge. How does it change the, the complexion of your action? I'm, I'm asking, I'm saying that in the context when we said sustain rajas and enhance sattva. When you don't enhance sattva, you remain rajasic. But when you sustain rajas and enhance sattva, you become more sattvic. So the question is how does sattva influence your action? Amitam, I will ask you. Any thoughts on that? Your action. Your action. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. So I was saying the action, the quality, you become more discerning in what you do and how you do it. And you're, you're always um, evaluating and assessing whether it takes you to the higher. So one example is, uh, is it selfless? So you're not focused just on your own, uh, you know, um, uh, value to yourself, but more towards community, the, the larger good. Yeah, so that's one one difference, I guess. Okay. So that influences makes your actions more unselfish, ultimately makes it selfish. Right? What else? What else sattva does to your action? Pasandama, what does sattva do to your action? You work from the point of the intellect, not with your mind. Your mind it becomes more peaceful and your intellect becomes more sharp and alert. Absolutely. So when you are of the quality of sattva, your actions are driven on the intellect. 
rather than the mind. Three is desires, which is the quality of rajas. Intellect is the trademark. Intellect means the agniyaspari. You work with the higher cause. Okay. You work with evenness of mind and uh, uh, no the dualities that is the pair of opposites doesn't affect you much. Indeed, you you become uh, more peaceful. Samatvam yoga uchchate. Evenness of mind is called yoga. That's the definition of sattva. Yoga karmasu kautalam. Dexterity of action is yoga. So when you become sattvic in nature, your action becomes dexterous. Your actions become skillful. Your actions become... You'll be very smart in anything that you do. As a result of your dexterity in action, precision in action, it also lends a charm to your mind where your mind becomes calm and peaceful and composed. So yoga or sattva is can be understood as perfection in action, peace of mind in action, two essential aspects of action. And that's what happens when sattva takes precedence, when you inject sattva into action. This is a clear sign that you are being sattvic. Very good. Anything else? Wonderful, Pasandama. Any other things? Ashwati, any other thought other than what they said? What happens when you inject sattva? Overall, you know, as you said, uh, Guruji and everyone else has said, um, the perfection of action is the goal. So, you know, I guess a question for you would be, you know, how do we identify that rajastic action and how do we have that intellectual capability to, you know, kind of hone that skill and make it into more of a sattvic action? I thought I am asking you a question. You are, you are reversing roles. Please don't do <laughs> Sorry about that. Like you. You know, as a kid, we would say, I'm tattif, tattif to you. I don't want to talk to you also. <laughs> hmm. Now, uh, what's the question? Sorry. So when we identify that we are operating on rajasic um, actions, you know, how do we identify and also motivate ourselves to want to, you know, reach that sattvic action? And then, you know, how do we carry that out in regular life? See, the first step of, uh, ident uh, of uh, any transformation starts with the identification. You need to identify. The problem, you know, Josh Billings, I'm sure you've heard this quote in Vedantic teachings. He said, Josh Billings says, the problem with most people, he says, Josh Billings says, the problem with most people is not their ignorance. The problem is, they think they know. If you think you're perfect, I can't do anything to you. I can't help you. But the moment you know that you don't know, the whole transformation begins there. So the first step, the first step of transformation is to identify areas of imperfection. That's what I said, is to identify areas of tamas or imperfections. So the knowledge that you are learning, the knowledge you are constantly, you know, that the important point is Ashwati is, the knowledge, the effort to imbibe knowledge must be consistent. It can't be erratic. Then it will not have the desired result. It must be constant. It must be consistent. When you do that, the awareness starts kicking in. And you say <clears throat> that we need to, how do I have the level of the intellect playing the role? So how this exercise of constant reflection does is it helps in these three ways. It's very practical, very beautiful. Now how it helps is there are three stages of intellect.
The first stage, <clears throat> I'm talking the process once you uh, start putting the effort. The first stage is The second is the three stages of your intellectual availability. The worst or the lowest is the intellect is available after the action, means there's no awareness at all. After you commit an action, you wake up and realize, oops, I have done something which I shouldn't. So when you start introspecting, when you start putting effort to enhance your knowledge, awareness starts coming in. So af from after the action, it comes while you're acting, something tells you, hey, be alert, be mindful. Last time you went through this phase, you have faced such consequences. I wouldn't want to repeat this. From why it comes before the action, you have the phenomenal clarity where you're able to lay a roadmap. You're able to forecast what is to expect. You're able to foresee what are the consequences and how do I conduct myself to my action and how do I deal with the fruits of my action. That is where clearly sattva comes in. And sattva is nothing but intellect. Sattvic intellect is where you will be able to attuned to your goal, you'll be able to clearly plan the course of action towards that goal. And you also know what are the hiccups, what are the obstacles, what are your weaknesses and how to be mindful. Everything everything becomes very clear. There's a great phenomenal clarity of thought. Are you okay, Shruti? Okay? Great. So, continuing the concept uh, to the answer, how does Sattva help? Um, we've got a few answers. Uh, Amitama said it makes your actions selfless. Vasantama said your actions become dexterous, your mind becomes peaceful. Uh, your actions are driven on the intellect. You become more detached. You become a witness. Your actions become sacrificial. Samyama said that you become, you work with the spirit of yajna. All the qualities of sattva start reflecting in your actions. Panigraji. Are you following, sir? Where are you, sir? Yes, sir. I was beach me thoda distraction ho gaya tha. The problem is I also got distracted. Okay. Usko That's what I'm doing. Yes. Yes. No problem. But you have it. You got to get back. Yes, yes. Uh, influences your action, it makes you more detached, it's more purposeful, it makes your actions more productive, more peaceful. Right, sir. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, I think we can, we can take up the judge's question. Then I'll come to Raghu's question. So the question was, how does the action, doing action, the, the process of action and inaction and inaction and action applies. Um, obviously it's a different action and inaction, we're talking about the same episode. See in the Shastras, especially I think in the Gita, if you said, uh, you must be able to see inaction and action and action and action. There's a on fix, if I'm not wrong, in the third chapter. Okay. Now, what does, what does it mean, inaction, inaction? The word inaction here means the Atman. Atman is, it is the inactive, an inactive state while it is enabling action. It doesn't do anything while it's doing everything. It's like, the electricity in the bulb. Electricity is giving life to the bulb. Exeduji gave a beautiful example at the day to me. It is like the, the power that is enabling this PC to work. The, the computer is doing everything that it's got to do. But is electricity doing anything? The computer is processing so many images. It is transmitting the audio. It is able to communicate. It is able to make our transaction seamless. All is happening because there is a constant power supply. While the power supply is enabling the PC to do its job, is the power doing anything in this? Nothing. That is the Atman, which is inaction, inaction. So he who sees inaction, inaction, and sees action, inaction. Action is what? Is the energy. He who sees the potential in the Atman. He who sees the Atman as that enlivening principle. He who sees the potential of power in electricity. Oh my God. A person who's illiterate, who's never seen electricity, he doesn't understand what that electricity can do. It can enliven, it can vitalize every gadget. It gives vitality, life. Imagine the main power switches off. Every gadget that is operating in this premises becomes inactive, dead. He who sees the action in inaction, he who sees the potential of action in Atman, he who sees inaction in action, action in action, he sees. Such a person sees. Such a person is wise. Thank you. you. What? Third video, Okay, right. Now, Raghu is asking a question. Uh, where are you, Raghu? Uh, okay. From previous class, what creates the desires is relating to this craving in dungeon lingering. I don't know, you're asking or making a statement. What creates the desires is this, yes, this. I don't know in which context you're saying you're right. We are you, Guruji. I was uh, <clears throat> making a statement from previous class. I was going through my notes. So it looked like both are the same. Um, uh, the craving, indulgence, and lingering from previous class, what we discussed. Oh, so also, again, come. Can you switch on your camera? Yeah. yeah. Because I want to punish you only when I can see you, I can punish you. Yeah, I will. You know what you are doing? While this class is going on, you are lingering of the previous class. No, that my just my notes got flipped then. Two, yeah. on, only two pages. That is what is lingering. Yes. The current class you are thinking of the previous class, that is the definition of lingering. Suddenly I was the craving indulgence of lingering is the previous uh, class notes I told. And suddenly here three stages came, so I thought. Because theory and practical both at the same time. You are a very wise man, sir. Very, very wise man. Wise man teach us in lessons in many ways. So you have taught us a lesson. But have you have you learned the lesson? Yeah, I'm still going through it. 
No, don't go through that. Please put that aside. I am right in front of you talking. Please listen to me. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. So move on. Let's move on to the second mantra. We answered all of them. Anything pending? ೇಯಶ್ಚಕ್ರೇಯಶ್ಚಮನುಷ್ಯಮೇತಸ್ತೌ the wise examines them thoroughly and upon discrimination vivi vivinakti viva viveka out of discrimination prefers the good from the pleasant but the ignorant chooses the pleasant for the sake of acquisition and enjoyment yoga kshema <laughs> the mandaha mandaha is another word for ignorant or alpa buddhi small intellects the small intellects or the ignorant run behind the world for yoga and kshema for yoga which is acquisition kshema is preservation i think you got the message in the translation itself you don't have to explain it further huh? so the majority of the people choose the path of preya the pleasant path why is it why do the majority of people choose the path the pleasant okay it is the easy part it is a easy answer why do the majority of mankind fall a prey to the path of the pleasant answer is there in the verse itself the mantra itself path of least resistance appealing externally sensually Feeds the senses. Can you share the mantra again? Instant gratification. Answer is there in the mantra. Ganesh, can you tell me what is the answer here? Guruji, they choose the path of the pleasant is because they think life is about acquisition. They think that is the sole purpose and sole objective of their life is to acquire and enjoy but what is the basis of that conclusion yeah i think purpose of life is acquisition and enjoyment but what how, what is that basis of the conclusion because their intellect is not strong enough to understand the higher goal of their purpose the answer is there in the verse itself you saw you took a note of the verse yes guruji do you want to see the verse again no guruji i have it written down okay but just for the benefit uh, can you yes, see yes guruji it's there 
You are right, but I'm saying you can get from the help from the mantra itself directly. Why do the majority choose Preyaha than Shreyaha? For the sake of acquisition and preservation. You're not able to uh, think differently. But you're right. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm only saying why is it? The conclusion is I, I, I seek this thinking this is the purpose of life. So you seek that. But what is the rationale behind it? Okay. Please think along. Think along. Uh, yeah, Pani Gragi. Guruji, uh, I uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, a little uh, confused regarding this uh, use of good and pleasant in two uh, separate uh, this thing. Yeah, good can be pleasant also. Why it is shown? So... The path of the good here refers to the path of the higher, where you seek the higher purpose of life. The path of the pleasant is to seek the worldly pursuits, mundane life of materiality and sensuality. The path of indulgence, which is the path of the lower. The path of the good is the path of the higher. In fact, you can say the path of good is a sattvic path. The path of the pleasant is rajasic path, where you are running behind the world for name, acquisition, enjoyment. So this is the lower. So this is where the famous, these are the very famous terms in the Shastras, the path of Shreya and Shreya. So path of good cannot be the path of pleasant. A path of pleasant cannot be the path of good. They're two different paths. I know uh, this is the context in which it has been used and explained also. But what I was thinking that good, uh, that path of uh, higher can also be pleasant. That's what I was thinking. Is but not to begin with. If you choose the path of the good, it is a lot of sacrifice, a lot of pain, a lot of struggle. The path of good is very, very, very demanding. Path of pleasant is. Give into it. Okay. Thank you. You know, yesterday I was just some some video had come of a um, of a very famous Bollywood celebrity hero, a very senior man. He is so fit. He is very very uh, physically fit. So he say he was saying they have this vanity van, you know, where they do makeup and you know. They get ready for their shoot. He said he purchased a kitchen van along with a vanity van. So the kitchen van also travels wherever he goes. And he was telling, my meals are only this. I will not have any spice in the food. I don't eat sweet. I don't eat uh, uh, masala. And he was showing, he was sharing a dish which he was, uh, which he is his, usual diet which you and I may not eat more than I don't know about uh, you but I can eat to a large extent I don't know about you I'm not saying you're right or wrong please I'm just saying it is beetroot grated beetroot with little salt and some other basic ingredients and that is his main dishes and day after day day after day and he is one of the richest Bollywood celebrities in the world he said, I can afford to have anything under the sun, but I, if I want help, if I want discipline, I must eat this kind of so-called non-appeasing. It doesn't appease the platter, but this is the path of the good for me. But I can have the best of five-star hotels sir, food served for me every meal, rest of my life. But that is the path of the pleasant is going to destroy my health. Oh, I want vigor, I want health, I want energy. I must choose the path of the good, not the path of the pleasant. I'm just reminded of the interview. So wherever you see, whatever good you see, wherever you can pick up ideas, you pick up. So it's not the same. They're two different things, completely different paths. 
So the, the, the answer to the question, why do majority choose Preyaha than Shreyaha is because they lack the discrimination. They don't have the Viveka. Your actions are based on your intellectual decisions. If your intellect is of a tamasic nature, you will make tamasic decisions. If your intellect rajasic nature, you make rajasic decisions. If your intellect sattvic nature, you take sattvic decisions. A rajasic intellect will choose acquisition and enjoyment. A sattvic intellect will choose the path of the good. So they lack the discrimination between anitya and nitya, between the, the higher and the lower, the permanent and the impermanent. They, they lack the viveka. So therefore, they choose the lower from the higher. They choose the karmakanda. They get on to the rituals. Even in the spiritual field, that is one concept. Even in the spiritual field, there is a lower and the higher. There are the essentials in the spiritual field and the non-essentials in the spiritual field. So the lower, those who lack the intellect, they choose the karma kanda. That's what I said. Karma kanda, karma marga is the avidya. They choose that. The, the wise people, they choose the essentials of religion, which is the jnana marga. Go back to that, that chart I presented. The path of inaction, the path of action, the path of knowledge and moksha. Go back to that chart. I hope you all are with me. Just another minute left. There are essentials and non-essentials in the spiritual path. So the non-essentials are karma marga, where you lead yourself to the lower, you lead yourself to the path of the preya. The higher is the path of the the Shreya. So you must be able to differentiate between the lower and the higher, the essential, non-essentials. In fact, even in the Taitreya Upanishad, in the, in the, the section called the Sikshavalli, Sikshavalli is the section in the, uh, in the Taitreya Upanishad, the, he talks of the Karma and Upasana. Karma is action, Upasana is worship. Similar concepts are mentioned in the Chandogya and the Brihadaranyak Upanishads. So there is enough mention in the Upanishads where there is a mention of karma and jnana. So you must be able to differentiate between the lower and the higher, the non-essential and essential. It's like, you know, if I were to, uh, in, a, in a bowl, if I have milk which has adulterated with water. It's not 100% milk. It has got water adulterating the milk. You know, the there's a bird, the uh, hamsa. What do you call it in, in English? Is there an English word for the word hamsa? <clears throat> hamsa, swan? Right, okay, it's a swan. Yes, you're right. So swan has the ability, it is said, that it can separate the milk from water. Amazing. Water. And, and, and you know, one water is mixed in milk, you don't know. But yet, in the Vedic vessel, there is the essential non essential. The non essentials, I'll just mention a minute or two more, please. The non essentials of religion are mechanical rituals, superstitious beliefs, and blind faith. These are the non-essentials of any religion, mechanical rituals, superstitious beliefs, and blind faith. And the essential is the Atma Vidya. Atma Vidya is a knowledge of Brahman. That is the essential. The word I used for discrimination is Nitya, Anitya, Viveka. Viveka is discrimination. You get the Namidama. Yes, please. Sir, I'm looking for the word for Anitya. You said uh, the non-essentials were Karma Kanda, right? 
but the essentials you used another word karma something what was that word starts with an m m the essentials uh the rituals and all that you said if it is if it is uh, non essentials the sanskrit word was karma kanda is there an opposite to that for the essentials karma something no 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 karma marga somebody is saying why are you repeating in yeah, I've got an yeah. echo here with the sound system. Sorry. No, we, uh, there is no, uh, I just mentioned it as jnana. No? The knowledge. Yeah, that's that what I got. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So the Vedic vessel has got the jnana and the karma. You need to choose wisely. Choose the jnanam than the karma. It's a fascinating section. Even though the actual Upanishad where the Atma Vidya has not started, but the preparation is elaborate preparation. Don't get tired with preparation. Don't get exhausted with preparation. Once it prepares you, then you launch. Launch into the knowledge is just academic. The preparation is all that's required. All right, we will continue. Okay. Oh, oh, Namada, oh, Namidam, oh, Nad, oh, Namudachate, oh, Nasya, oh, Namadaya, oh, Nameva, Vashishate. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Hari Guru Om Hari Om.